In this video, we're going to show you how to run your AP checks. So you could choose your system menu by going to 431, select invoices to pay, or you can choose the Sage desktop for vendors and purchasing. When you open this screen, you get an invoice selection screen. Now, there are many ways to select or drill down to the criteria that you want to see. Say you're doing just by a few vendors or just by job. Also, under the pay options, if you want to pay retentions, it would be underneath there. Or vendors actually have the ability to keep track of overdue certificates of insurance. So if you wanted to see those, you actually have to uncheck those boxes. And then there's invoices for hold pay on subcontracts. You can include just job ones, non-job related ones, only ones with a disputed status, um, invoices set to pay that you've already recorded. You could sort on many things. You can also sort by name or number. So th here's the warning for an expired general uh, certificate of insurance. And you can note here that we're going to highlight the column vendor, right click and say sort by vendor name, which just helps aesthetically rearrange it alphabetically. If you want to drill down to an invoice, you could double click on the invoice number. It would take you to the 42 screen payables if you needed to look at something there. You could close that out, come back to the select invoices to pay. It has invoice date, discount date, status, uh, invoice total, net due. So if you notice that if it's just bolded in a cell, then that really means it's just a recommendation. It's actually not there. It doesn't accept it until you hit enter. So you can hit enter, you can highlight a column and do pay, or you can short pay an invoice by just typing the amount that you're going to set to pay there. Now I always print this report, the set to pay report, so you need to save the file. And the set to pay report's just handy to know this is what's going to be in the check run this time. So it's a nice report just to have on hand. Okay, so you're done in selecting invoices to pay, and now you need to pay your vendors. So the first thing you're going to do is look at your accounting period, which is important to remember that. Select the vendors that you want to pay. If you need to print any lien waivers, you should do that at this time, and then check transmittals. You can also choose how you're paying these, these vendors. Is it by check, by voucher, by ACH? Or if you just need to record a payment, that is also done here. Like say you did online banking or a manual check. So if you're just recording it in Sage, then you could do it by that. But this time we're going to cut checks. So we do pay vendors. And you make sure that you've got the, re the right check for you, for your company. And then you go ahead and hit print. And a new dialog is going to come up asking you for your general checking account. So this should be your regular checking account. It should be a cash account. And then it's going to ask you, it's going to default from the last check number to this one. So it knows the next starting number. Check date should match your accounting period. And then you say print checks. And then you should notice that you have three checks to be printed. So you would load three checks in the printer for it to be appropriate. Okay. And then once they have printed, this is what your check would look like. Obviously printed on your check stock. But you have this other dialogue that talks about posting checks. So say, for instance, in the middle of your check run, the printer gets jammed and you can only go through 6555. The rest of the checks are toast and you need to start over. Or don't post any checks. So this is a fail safe to prevent you from posting checks when they actually didn't print appropriately. So you say continue, check posting is complete, and you're done.